Hey guys, what's going on? You're watching CSS for Beginners Lesson 42 and in this video we're going to talk about the width and height properties in CSS. Wow. Alright, so so far in this course we've talked about the box model quite a lot and we've said that the box model controls the kind of spatial properties of block level elements and we've also talked about what block level elements are. So we've discussed the margin, we've discussed padding and we've talked about borders as well but we've not really talked about the width and height properties in any great detail. So that's what we're going to take a look at today. Wow. Okay, so I'm back here in the code now, and as you can see, I've added these four div tags right here. And the first one has got a class of static width. The second one has a class of percentage width. And the bottom two here have classes of inline block. I've also added a selector up here, which is going to target all of these divs. It's going after all of the divs within the main content. Remember, the main content is here and it's going after all of these divs within that. And it's giving those a background color of a light gray, and it's giving them a margin bottom of 20 pixels. Remember the way this margin shorthand works is top, right, bottom, left. Okay, so let's take a look at what this looks like in a browser before doing anything else. Okay then, so there they are, and uh, we've got our four divs within this parent element, and they're all taking up 100% width of the parent element minus this uh, area here, which is the padding on the parent element. So remember, all block level elements automatically take up 100% of the parent element's width. So that's why they're doing that. So what we're going to do now is take a look at the width and height properties in the code and mess around with those a little bit. And the first thing I'm going to do is go after this static width div here. So to do that, I'll do my class selector, start it with a period and then say static width and then we'll give it some values now the width property is just width and by static width i mean we're going to give it a pixel value and we'll just say 300 pixels and that's static because no matter how big your browser is or how big the parent element is we're saying to this one here it's always going to be 300 pixels all right and we're going to do the same for the height and we'll just give that a height of 100 pixels, okay? So let's view this in a browser now and see what it looks like. All right, cool, so there it is. It's a width of 300 pixels and a height of 100 pixels. Cool, so now we're gonna take a look at percentage width. And to do that, we'll go after our percentage width class here, and we'll give it a width property and this time I'm going to say 70%. So what that there is saying is whatever width the parent element is, I want this div to be 70% of that width. Okay, and then we'll just give it a height of 50 pixels. So the height is always going to be static, but the width is going to be dynamic depending on how wide the parent element is. So let me show you that in a browser. Okay, so here now, you can see this grey box is about 70% the width of this white box, which is good, because if we were designing for a mobile screen, then maybe the browser and the white box would be smaller. And now you can see here, as I increase and make this window smaller, that this white box is getting smaller, and subsequently, this grey box is getting smaller because this grey box is always 70% of this white box. So this is really good for mobile kind of uh, devices. If you're designing a website that's going to scale down to mobiles, then it's really good to work with percentages because where is this uh, 300 pixel block you can see now is creeping over the edge. Okay, this 70% width one here is always 70% the width of this parent element. So it's never going to do this. All right, so that's really cool. So now let's look at these two here, which I've given a class of inline block to. So we'll target both of those. And this time what I'm gonna do is say, give them a width of 40%. And we know that block level elements stack on top of each other. Now, in this case, I want these two stack side by side. And we know to do that, we have to give it those inline properties because inline elements stack side by side. However, if we were to say display inline, we know that that will take away the box model properties. We won't have full control over those because the, uh, the box model only controls block level elements. 
So what we need to do is say inline block to get the, uh, the best of both worlds, remember? So we're getting that side to side property we get with inline elements, but we're also getting the block level element properties, which is gonna let us control the, uh, the box model properties, things like margin and padding, okay? So let's save that now and view this in a browser. Cool, and there we go. Now we have a 40% width here for this one, and right next to it, another one, which is 40% in width too. And same again, if we inspect the elements and scroll this in and out, or rather zoom it left and right, we can see them getting smaller and getting larger dependent on how large this uh, parent element is. Okay, so that about covers uh, everything we need to talk about when it comes to width and height. If you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to throw a comment down below. I'll answer all of those as soon as possible. Otherwise, if you enjoy these videos, please like, subscribe or share, and I'll see you guys in the next one.